bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in today's class we are going to begin with the third chapter of your class 10th alternative english which is speech by seven suzuki now as the title suggests what we are going to read is a speech so this is a first hand account of uh the person whose name is seven suzuki so she was delivering a speech that we are going to read but who exactly is seven suzuki why is her speech so important for us to read and to be assessed in our exams so seven suzuki was born on the 30th of november 1979 in vancouver canada Her mother Tara Elizabeth Coolis is a writer and her father David Suzuki is a geneticist. Geneticist I hope we all know the people the doctors who are concerned with the genetics of uh, people the genetics of concerned authorities uh, of the patients and an environmental activist so somebody who deals with the environment who's interested in the environment and the activities pertaining to it when she was 9 seven set up the environmental children's organization where children could become aware of environmental concerns now just look at her when only she was 9 years of age she had set up the environmental children's organization this was the organization where the children could become members of the environmental concerns 1992 when she was 12 seven along with the other members of this environmental concern uh, children's organization they actually raised money for uh, them so that they could attend the summit the uh, you know the meeting related to earth at rio de janeiro brazil seven made a moving speech there what do we mean by moving something that will actually feel that you are going wrong something that will leave a very strong impact on you So she made a very impactful speech expressing the anxiety of children expressing the fears the nervousness uh you know that the children right now of today's generation have and what are the fears of the children the exploitation that the adults are doing for the environment the adults are misusing the environment they are not preaching uh, you know what they speak so she gave a very strong and a powerful speech on this topic and she received a standing ovation from those who were present at the summit seven continues to be an activist speaking at public forums about the ecological problem so she is connected with the environment and the activities related to it so we are going to read the speech that she had given at the earth summit at rio de janeiro so hello she begins i am seven suzuki speaking for eco the environmental children's organization we are a group of 12 and 13 year olds trying to make a difference vanessa suti morgan giesler michelle quig and me we've raised all the money to come here ourselves to come 5000 miles to tell you adults you must change your ways So how did she begin her speech she introduced herself to all the eminent personalities who were present there to all the world leaders to all the diplomats the bureaucrats the politicians whosoever was present at the summit she introduced herself she told that she was representing the environmental children's organization She said that our organization comprises of 12 and 13 year old children and we 
have been trying and we have been working hard to make a difference in the world environment she named three of the other members who had accompanied her who had come with her on that summit vanessa suti morgan giesler and michelle quick so other than seven suzuki these three uh, kids had also accompanied her she said that we have raised all the money to come to this place we did not take the money from anyone we raised it we got it for ourselves we've come 5000 miles from our place just to tell you adults that you need to change the way you treat this world you need to change your actions you need to change your perceptions your opinion your thinking coming up here today i have no hidden agenda i am fighting for my future losing my future is not like losing an election or a few points on the stock market i am here to speak for all generations to come i am here to speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard I am here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. I am afraid to breathe the air because I don't know what chemicals are in it. I used to go fishing in Vancouver, my home, with my dad until just a few years ago. We found the fish full of cancers. and now we hear of animals and plants going extinct every day vanishing forever so she said that coming here today the reason why i am present in front of you all there is no hidden agenda agenda there is no purpose there is no hidden reason there is no hidden conspiracy because of which i am here I have come here to fight for my future. She said that losing my future is not a small thing. I want to fight for it. There would be uh, you know a few of you who would feel that losing the election by one point is a very bad thing for them. Maybe losing a few points on the stock market. We all understand that when you invest in the stock market there is a lot of up and down which continues to take into effect uh, in the stock markets and obviously the people who invest they earn profit so those points are very important for them so she said that for you people losing your points in the stock market would be very important and bad then for the politicians not winning because of one vote may be something which is heartbreaking but for me losing my future is something which i just cannot tolerate i cannot let that happen she says that i am here to speak for all the generations to come so she made it very clear that not only was she speaking on behalf of the people of her generation but the generation that was yet to come the future generation i am here to speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard starving hungry she says i am here to represent to talk about those children who are there all around the world on the streets they are hungry they have nothing to eat they keep on crying because of hunger but their cries are unheard unheard nobody pays any attention to them nobody hears them nobody listens to their cries I am here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. Why do the animals have nowhere to go? Because the forests are being cut. If there will be no forest, where will the animals go? 
if they will enter the cities they will be captured and killed by us or put into the zoo so these poor animals they are not uh, satisfied they are not happy with the development that is taking place in our country why because obviously their homes are being destroyed and they have nowhere to go i am afraid to go out in the sun because of the holes in our ozone she says that the moment i go out of the house and step in the sun i feel very afraid i feel scared because i know that my ozone has a lot of holes and the uv rays the ultraviolet rays are actually getting hold of me i am getting the ultraviolet rays on my skin which is harmful for me again i am afraid to breathe the air because i don't know what chemicals are in it she said that i am very scared i cannot breathe the air peacefully because i do not know what all chemicals are a part of this air then she tells uh, the people that a couple of years ago she would go for fishing at vancouver her home she has specifically highlighted that her home that she's come from vancouver canada so she says that just a couple of years ago she would go for fishing with her father but all the fishes that they would catch they were full of cancers the fishes uh, were cancerous how did the fishes get cancer because obviously the industrial waste is being dumped in the rivers we have seen whatever dump gets out of the industries that goes into the river that is why the marine life the marine animals are suffering so bad and now we hear of animals and plants going extinct every day she says that every day we continue to hear of multiple species of plants and animals who are getting extinct extinct they are getting you know the their population their numbers are getting lesser and lesser in number and there will be a day when they will vanish forever when they will disappear from the earth altogether In my life I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals jungles and rainforests full of birds and butterflies but now I wonder if they will even exist for my children to see did you have to worry about these things when you were my age all this is happening before our eyes and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions i am only a child and i do not have all the solutions i want you to realize neither do you you don't know how to fix the holes in our ozone layer you don't know how to bring the salmon back up a dead stream You don't know how to bring back an animal now extinct and you can't bring back the forest that once grew where there is now a desert. If you don't know how to fix it, please stop breaking it. So she says that in my life I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals. Herd of animals, we all know the group of wild animals. So she tells us and the people who were present at the summit that she always dreams to see a huge group of wild animals uh, you know present in the environment in the nature jungles and rainforests which are full of birds and butterflies but now i wonder if they will even exist for my children to see She says that for us in any case the population is getting so extinct it is getting lesser day by day but i wonder if my children would be able to see it one day or not whether my children would be able to enjoy the beauty of the nature or not did you have to worry about these things when you were my age 
So she asks the people who were present there that when you were my age, when you were 12 or 13 years old, did you people have to worry about these things? No, you didn't because you did not see anything going less. You had everything in abundance. You had all the beautiful green forests and trees and butterflies and birds around you. But we children are worried because we can see you people exploiting it, destroying it. All this is happening before our eyes and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. She says that we can see that our environment is getting depleted. The condition of our nature is getting bad day by day. But still we people believe that we still have time to control it, that we have a solution to this very big problem. She says that I am only a child and I don't have all the solutions. So she says that even I do not have a solution to all these problems that I can see. I want you to realize neither do you. She says that I, being a child, have understood that we do not have a solution to these major problems and I want you who are adults, who are more intelligent than I am, who are wiser than me, to understand and to accept that even you do not have a solution to these problems. You do not know how to fix the holes in our ozone layer. So all these holes that are there in the ozone layer, you do not know how to mend them, how to fix them. You don't know how to bring the salmon back up a dead stream. You don't know how to bring back to life a salmon. Salmon is a kind of fish. So how to bring back a fish that too in a dead stream, a river, a water body which is now dead. It is filthy, it is dirty because of all the garbage going in it. You don't know how to bring back the animals who are now extinct. So those animals whose species have all together uh, vanished from our earth. You don't know how to bring them back. And you cannot even bring back the forest that grew on the place which is now a desert. So if you do not know how to fix it, if you do not know how to find a solution to mend the errors that you are making, then please stop breaking it. So if you can't mend it, you cannot break it either. She was as simple with her words as she could. Here, you may be delegates of your government, business people, organizers, reporters or politicians. But really, you are mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles and all of you are someone's child. I am only a child, yet I know we are all part of a family, five billion strong. In fact, 30 million species strong and borders and government will never change that. I am only a child, yet I know that we are all in this together and should act as one single world towards one single goal. In my anger, I am not blind and in my fear, I am not afraid of telling the world how I feel. In my country, we make so much waste. We buy and throw away, buy and throw away, buy and throw away. And yet the northern countries will not share with the needy. Even when we have more than enough, we are afraid to share. We are afraid to let go of some of our wealth. She then tells everyone that you people may be delegates, you know, you are here representing your government, you are uh, business people, you are organizers of this summit, you are the reporters, politicians. But other than this responsibility, there is a bigger responsibility, a bigger relation that you are nurturing. 
and what is that you are a mother you are a father you are sister brother uncle aunt and all of you are somebody's child as well and you have to remember that she said that i am also a child i am hardly 12 or 13 years of age this is what we have read at the beginning so she said that i am a child but then also i understand that we all are a part of a family 5 billion strong 5 billion the world population she meant she said that each one of us is a part of family how because we are all connected we are all affecting each other's lives in one way or the other if i am not taking care of the environment it is not only me and my family who will have to suffer but the other people of the other countries will also have to suffer because of that because we after all live on one uh, you know one earth that we have so she said that we are a part of family which comprises of 5 billion people in fact 30 million species strong she said in fact there are 30 million species also who are a part of this family animals birds butterflies all these are a part of our family as well and borders and government will never change that she said although we are separated because of different government that each country has because of the borders that the country has but we all understand that we are connected that we have a very strong impact on each other's lives i am only a child she says again yet i know we are all in this together she says i am too young when it is uh, you know when it comes to your age but still i understand that we all are a part of this together that we have to act as one single unit together we have to fight together we have to decide that there is one goal that we have to achieve and that is to take care of our environment in my anger i am not blind and in my fear i am not afraid of telling the world how i feel she says that even though i am very angry right now but i am not blind You know why does she say that? Usually, it is a proverb in English that when you are blind, you know, when you are angry, you become blind as well. You just stop seeing anything around you, anything good, bad, anything reasonable. You just stop accomplishing that. You just stop acknowledging that. So she said, "Yes, I am angry with you, adults, but I am not blind. Yes, I am afraid, but I am not afraid of." telling the world how i feel in my country she says that you know when i talk about my country that is canada she says that we make so much waste there is so much wastage that we cause that we create every day we buy we throw we buy we throw we buy we throw and yet the northern countries will not share with the needy she said that the irony of the situation is <clears throat> that we never share whatever is extra with the other countries with the people who are needy who actually need that if we have so much to that we can throw away then it is better to share with those who need it she says that even when we have more than enough we are afraid to share we just do not want to share our things with anyone why because we are afraid to let go some of our wealth because we are greedy selfish people and we just cannot let our wealth go off we cannot let our things to be given to somebody else in canada we live the privileged life with plenty of food water and shelter we have watches bicycles computers and television sets 
The list could go on for two days. Two days ago, here in Brazil, we were shocked when we spent time with some children living on the streets. This is what one child told us. I wish I was rich. And if I were, I would give all the street children food, clothes, medicines, shelter, love and affection. If a child on the streets who has nothing is willing to share, why are we who have everything still so greedy? I can't stop thinking that these are children my own age. That it makes a tremendous difference when you are born. That I could be one of the children living in the favelas of Rio. I could be a child starving in Somalia. Or a victim of war in the Middle East or a beggar in India. I am only a child. Yet I know that if all the money spent on war was spent on finding environmental answers, ending poverty and finding treaties, what a wonderful place this earth would be. She says that in Canada, we live the privileged life. Privileged life? We have a wonderful life. We have everything that we require. We have food, we have water, we have shelter. That is a comfortable house to live in. We have watches, bicycles, computers, televisions and the list is so long that I can continue for two days. She says that two days ago, when I came uh, in Brazil, we spent some time with the children living on streets and we were shocked when we heard what they had to share with us. She then tells us what one of the children had told her. Now she says that one child said to us that I, was, I wish I was rich and if I would have had money, I would have given all the street children food, clothes, medicines, shelter, love and affection. This is what one of the homeless child, a child living on street, a child who himself or herself was poor and had nothing at all, told Severn that if I was rich, I would have done this with my money. She says that if a child who has nothing is still so willing, is still uh, ready to share, then we people who have everything, why are we so greedy? Why are we so selfish? She says that I just cannot stop thinking that these children whom I met were my own age. And she says that this is when I realize that it makes a tremendous difference where you are born. That all the difference in your life is because of where you are born. She tells us that if I would not have been fortunate, you know, I would not have been lucky to born uh, with uh, born to my parents in Canada, Vancouver, maybe I would have been one of these children who were living in the favelas of Rio, favelas in these poor regions, these poor areas of Rio. So maybe I would also have been one of these children. I could have been starving in Somalia. So Now these are a few countries which were considered to be poor countries back then when we are talking about 1992. So she says that maybe I would have been a child with no food in Somalia or I would have been a victim of war. I would have been a child who had suffered a great deal because of the war in the Middle East countries. Or I would have been a person begging in India. She says that I am only a child and yet I know that if this money that we spend on war, if we will spend this money on finding the solutions to our environmental problems, then we will be able to end this poverty. Poverty, there would be nobody who would be poor and homeless and hungry. 
we would be able to find treaties you know all of us together would be in a position to help each other imagine what a beautiful place this earth would be at school even in kindergarten you teach us how to behave in the world you teach us to not fight with others to work things out to respect others to clean up our mess not to hurt other creatures to share not be greedy then why do you go out and do the things you tell us not to do do you do not forget why you are attending these conferences who you are doing this for we are your own children you are deciding what kind of world we are go- growing up in so she says that you know we are in school even when we were in the kindergarten kindergarten the primary schooling you know the play schools that we say so she says that even when we were in the kindergarten when we were too young you that is the elders you people taught us how to behave ourselves in the world you taught us that we should not fight with anyone you taught us that we have to work things out that is we have to find a solution to all the problems you taught us to respect each other you taught us to clean our own mess whatever is dirty around us you only told us to clean it you taught us not to hurt any other creature any other animal or bird you taught us that we need to share our things not to be greedy so she asks these people that if you only have taught us all these things then why do you not do this on your own why are you only teaching us and not practicing all this on your own do not forget she tells them that when you are attending all these conferences who you are doing this for you are doing this for us we are your children you are doing this for us and you are the ones who are deciding what kind of a world you are giving to us and the future generation what is the kind of place you are giving us to live in parents should be able to comfort their children by saying everything's going to be all right it's not the end of the world and we are doing the best we can but i don't think you can say that to us any more are we even on your list of priorities my dad always says you are what you do not what you say well what you do makes me cry at night you grown up say you love us but i challenge you please make your actions reflect your words thank you so she tells them that parents should be able to comfort their children this is what our parents do whenever we are scared whenever we are nervous whenever we are in a problem what do our parents do they make us feel comfortable by telling us that don't worry everything is going to be all right the world is not going to end that we are here we will do the best we can to bring you out of this problem she says but i don't think you adults have the right to tell this to us any more are we on the list of your priorities what do we mean by list of priorities all the things that we consider to be important in our lives so she asked the members of the summit that are we children even important for you my dad always says she tells them that we are not what we say but what we do everybody can continue to say a lot of things you know yap 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 there are multiple things that we can say but our personality our mindset our opinions are reflected comes out to the people with the way we act with the way we behave she says but and the way you people behave the things you people do make me cry at night she says she says that you grown ups you tell us that you love us 
but i can challenge you she says that i dare you i can guarantee that you do not mean what you say she says that your actions what you are doing to the environment do, uh, you know these actions do not reflect your love for us because had you loved us you would have believed in giving us a better and a beautiful environment and with this seven suzuki ended her speech and as we read that she got a standing ovation for her speech and we ourselves have uh, experienced that it indeed was a very powerful a very strong a very impactful speech she gave in which she talked about the way the adults are leading to environmental degradation in which she complains about all the things that the adults are doing rather than saving the world and the environment they are becoming a reason of its depletion so she questions them in multiple ways she tells the people present there that she was a part of the eco the environmental children's organization she told how four of them Seven Suzuki, and along with her, the three other people who had accompanied her to this summit, they had raised all the money on their own and had travelled five thousand miles from Canada to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in order to tell those people that you need to think what you are doing with the world. she talked to them about how the marine animals are getting cancer because of the industrial waste that is dumped into the river she told about the people how the poor children on the streets of rio those poor children who were her age who had nothing at all were willing to share if they had abundance of something yet she asks them that what about us we have everything and yet we are not willing to share she questions them that if you people cannot mend if you people do not have a solution to the environmental problems that we are in then why are you causing them if you cannot mend it you have to stop breaking it so she questions them at every point in time she tells them that who has given you the responsibility to actually destroy our environment the place which is not only for us humans but the other 30 million species who live with us she told them she reminded them that these borders and these government this is just a name we all are a part of one family and one's actions will always have an impact on the other people so with this seven suzuki simply wanted the adults the grown ups the bureaucrats the politicians the delegates who had come from across the world on that summit to realize what they were doing to the environment and to actually make an effort to find a solution to the environmental problems so my dear students with this we come to the end of this small yet very strong chapter or rather a speech that was delivered by seven suzuki